Hey everyone, how's it going tonight? It is Sunday night. Um, it is uh, December 30th and I'm just uh, chilling in my basement painting while everyone else is asleep. This is when I get most of my work done. Um, that and the weekends when my husband's home and can help out with the kids and uh, and or um, we stay home most of the day usually on the weekends. Especially with it being winter and you know not much going on so I'm working on a, um, a design which is a Lucky Craft. Um, I have one completed from my live show um, this past Friday night. This um, isn't co complete, completed totally because I don't have um, the glitter on it that I'll put on in the epoxy phase and that will um, be on the bottom so it'll be a, a coarse black glitter on the bottom. This is a copy of the Lucky Craft Bulb Ream, which is um, a tournament winning lure that was discontinued um, many years ago and uh, is still worth quite a bit of money and, and pretty highly sought after. So uh, why not do it my way, right? So um, it's a little bronzy on a little dark aged copper, aged bronze type look on the top. And then um, this is a, a mixture. It's like a... Um, coppery tangerine um, metallic with just a little bit of a scale pattern and then a metallic yellow on the bottom so um, I'm gonna do a whole batch of those those will be in the store in a few days and um, I have my TV on sorry I should probably have turned that down and I'll um, I'll have those in the store shortly along with some of the other um, designs that I added just this just tonight I added some designs as well so look for those so these are all primed up and ready to go I just need to get um, get going on making them look good so the bottoms just need to be yellow bottoms and sides and then um, and then we'll go from there so nothing too exciting um, so I'm using a createx paint on the bottom of these this is a, a it's a yellow Createx paint. Um, I don't dilute Createx paints unless um, I'm usually unless I'm mixing it with something else for a different color because I like the consistency how it comes out again. Uh, and that's totally a personal preference. I, I tend to shoot at about 30 psi if I'm shooting um, just a straight color without a lot of detail. Um, forgot to shoot water out of that. And um, so it goes through pretty easy. If you're using a, a different brand, sometimes you have to, to dilute it because you just can't push it through. Um, you just can't push it through an airbrush without diluting it. And I, I use all different kinds of um, types. I use all different brands. So I'm not going to totally do the tops on these because you just don't need to. Um, I'm going to go over it with a darker metallic color. So, And that's going to have a black, back, uh, black background on it. And so you really aren't going to... You know, you're not you're not gonna see the yellow on the top at all, or need it. Um, so I use all different brands of paint. I use um, Color Shift um, Folk Art makes some cool uh, metallics and, and some Color Shift paints that are really um, nice. Um, some of their pearls uh, or metallics are a little bit more. Um, I guess reflective, reflective maybe a larger, a larger flake maybe, than some of the pearls that you can buy. Um, a lot of people will tell you not to spray metallics through a, an airbrush, but if you dilute them right and if you um, make sure you clean your gun frequently, usually it can be done. I had a lot of problems early on with metallics because I think what I was doing was I wasn't cleaning my gun enough, and. Um, so what, what happens then is you get a little bit of a narrowing of the chamber inside and, um, and or in the nozzle. But sometimes it wasn't even the nozzle where I was having the problems. It was more in the gun itself. And, you know, you wouldn't really understand what I'm talking about but if you've never seen what the inside of an airbrush looks like. But, um, you know, you can look that up on YouTube if it interests you. Um, just, just look up, like... Um, cleaning an airbrush or fully cleaning an airbrush and then you'll see what the whole thing looks like on the inside. Um, so we get clogged or narrowed with dried paint, you know, and black is one of the worst offenders for like drying out <clears throat> or clogging up your airbrush. 
because it just gets dried in there super easy. And white can be the same way, but I find that black is the worst of all. Um, anyways, uh, and then the, per the the flake that's in the in the metallics or the pearls would get stuck easier. And then it would just clog up and you wouldn't be able to spray anything or it would just spatter. And it's really super frustrating. So if you if you ever wanted to do this, wanted to make your own baits or, or, or paint anything else with an airbrush, just be prepared to um, feel a little bit of a, a little bit of pain along the way. It's not it's not for the faint of heart. Um, you have to have patience and you have to have um, the ability to, you know, know when it's time to quit, when you're frustrated and and come back to it later when you have um, a little more motivation to uh, give it another shot. So it, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, and if you are one of those people that's super lucky and like just gets it right away, then props to you because uh, you're a better person than me then. Because <laughs> I had nothing but problems at the beginning, but it didn't stop me. And I, and I really do love, I love creating designs. I love um, painting. Um, I like all of it. I love meeting people in the world of fishing, and um, everybody really is nice. I like the family atmosphere of it. We love taking our kids camping and fishing. That's what we do in the summers. We have a pop-up camper, and we they absolutely love the outdoors and fishing, and uh, they get a little impatient when they aren't catching fish every 10 minutes, but uh, that's what snacks are for, so... Typically, I'm there for, uh, I'm a snack lady and uh, trying to keep the kids alive and happy as long as possible. So, and they like to go fast. All kids like to go fast, right? Our kids aren't old enough for like water toys yet. They're three and five. So, um, I'm sure someday that'll turn into wanting to have, you know, a tube or something behind the boat but they're a little bit too little for that yet that would just scare them so um although i'm sure there are some people out amongst you who get their little ones on tubes but mine nah i think they'd just be scared so so i'm just um throwing down this yellow paint here and then i'm gonna follow this up with like a orangish uh copper color on the sides and then um I'll I'll hit the top with a aged it's like an aged copper it's like much darker and um then during the epoxy process is when I get to my uh the glitter so the glitter will be in the epoxy and I'll just um I'll just spread that on with a brush so I use um art resin two-part epoxy it is a non-yellowing um, UV resistant epoxy so it protects the color of the paint that's underneath so if you leave your baits out in the sun a lot like you know you just hook a few crankbaits onto a few different uh, rods while you're out and they just kind of sit out on the deck of your boat all day long while you're while you're fishing um, the sun won't, won't fade the paint colors because it has a UV protective coating in it to prevent your artwork from being damaged by the sun. So that's one other advantage that we have over some of the other coatings that um, other lure manufacturers or painters use. Um, I would love to use KBS uh, diving coat, but it is very toxic and um, we do not really have a good place to ventilate it and our kids have asthma. So we have no pets. Um, and, uh, we have no pets and we have, have, and we can't, we can't, we don't use anything that has fumes. So all my paints are water-based. They have no smell. Um, and they, and neither does my epoxy coating. So I do everything in my house and, um, Sometimes my kids are down here with me, so I just have a part of my basement blocked off. Um, just a little corner of my basement blocked off, where I have the desk that my wonderful husband built me, because he is amazing, and um, 
that is where I do all my work. So now I've got my yellow laid down. It looks really shiny, nice and shiny. It's kind of hard to tell in this light, but it looks really nice and shiny and um, it'll be really eye catching for the fish. So um, I do need to actually add just a little bit more. I had one bait that I made during my live show last time that didn't take. And so I actually got my finger on it when it was still wet and it stuck. So I'm fixing it. That's the real story. But I was, I did two. Usually I do like a, a couple <laughs> different ones. That way, like if I screw one up, then I still have a backup plan. So I just, I covered the side back up with white. I just reprimed, basically I just reprimed the side. And you can't even see it now because it's been reprimed. So I sanded it flat so that you couldn't see where the paint was kind of like stuck to my finger. And then I'll just go back and I'll fix the pattern. You'll never even know that it happened. That's the reality that those things happen. You're like, ah, oh, shoot. You know, like I finger sticking to this and I'm like, everybody's watching me. So it's okay. I ended up telling everybody and it was fine. Everybody's, everybody's really cool. So if you haven't yet, check us out on um, Friday nights. I am live painting every Friday night at eight o'clock. Um, unless we have something going on, but typically we are home. Um, we have little kids, so we don't do a whole lot of partying. Uh, it might be a little different in the summer with, um, with the tournament schedule. My husband does run the American Bass Association tournament trail for Colorado. And, um, those dates are all available on the Colorado ABA Facebook page. If that's something that interests you and you're in the area, um, he runs a really good tournament. He's um, made it a great trail, so check those out if you have any interest. The winnings are pretty good if you're into, uh, you know, a chance to win some good money. And um, everybody always has a good time. So there are a few two-day tournaments as well this year, um, which should be a lot of fun. So we're looking forward to hopefully taking our camper and the kids with us to those. Um, I don't usually make it to the tournaments, but I would like to. I'd like to have some of my products there so that everybody can check them out. We are a sponsor of um, his trail, so our name is on the plaques and all that stuff. So um, hopefully you'll see us out there if you guys uh, go out there. It's kind of tough for me to get up at that time in the morning and even tougher to get my kids up at that time in the morning. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes, but um, at weigh-in, I hope to be there at least a few, if not um, quite a few of the tournaments this year. So, um, if you're still with me, thanks guys for watching. I'm Peyton Bates, um, late night in my basement on a, on a um, I guess it's Sunday, but we're right before New Year's. So, I hope y'all have some fun plan plans for tomorrow night if you're listening to me on uh, New Year's Eve day. We are going to be home and probably not, well I'll probably be awake, <laughs> but I can't speak for the rest of my family, probably not for New Year's, uh, the New Year's Eve celebration. So um, I'm just rifling through my stash here trying to find my pearl tangerine. Creatix paint that I need to use for the, um, I'm just going to turn off my compressor for a second. Um, I can't find it. It's here, I promise. Boo -doo -boo -doo -boo -boo. So we don't get out really for a whole lot of partying these days. So here, is that it? Oh, I keep picking that one up, but that's not it. Um... I can't find it. It's not good. I remember my daughter pointing and asking me if that was orange, and I thought it was my pearl orange, and now I can't find it. That is weird. Sorry, I don't mean to bore you. You're probably gonna gonna leave me while I'm lost in my paint box here, trying to find my orange. It's a really pretty color. It's um, oh there it is. Priya Texas tangerine. Um, pearl really pretty you have to make sure you shake these really well too because the flake settles to the bottom so you want to make sure you get lots of it on there 
So, um, these will all be posted to YouTube too. If you guys haven't checked out my YouTube channel, um, Colorado Custom Lures, subscribe, uh, watch our videos. I'm going to try and get more active on um, Facebook or YouTube in the coming months. Um, get some more videos out there, techniques, um, short videos, as well as just, you know, my boring old painting videos where I'm sitting at home on a Sunday night painting in my basement. Um, if there's anything else you guys want to see, let us know. I'll try, I'm going to try and capture some videos during tournaments and uh, of us fishing and, um, you know, whatever y else y'all think would be fun or interesting to watch. Let me know because, um, we want you guys to be part of the family too. So, okay, I'm going to check out my color here and I'm going to, um, I'm just going to kind of peek at it against another one that I did to see if I'm close here. Yeah, I think I'm pretty close. So. I'll just uh, set this one aside because I can't. I don't have the hands to hang it up. Um, so um, I'm gonna try and get as many videos as I can out there, and um, we appreciate y'all subscribing to our channel and sharing, sharing and liking our page and um, and our live feed especially because uh, if people aren't doing anything, they they love to just kind of check in and and see. See what it's like to paint baits. So this is what I do. Um, I'm not posting this live right now because I don't. Um, I'm not here to answer questions really tonight. I'm by myself. Um, usually my on my live feeds, you'll see on Friday night we get a lot of people. I think we had well over a thousand people in last week and. Um, my husband is typically there to um, answer people's questions if I miss them. I try to hit them, but I don't always. Um, I don't always make it, so um, I don't always see them all. So this is just a cross stitch loom, and I'm just using it to hold, basically to hold um, the netting so that I don't have to clip it on. Because what I've I've had trouble with in the um, past is, you know, clipping the netting on just scratches the paint off the bottom of your bait because you have to clip clip them at the bottom and so I'd rather just try and hold it if I can and then I try and keep my hair dryer which I don't have plugged in right now but I try to keep my hair dryer handy so that I can do a couple of different coats at once without <clears throat> without moving the netting and then I can do it without having to um, without having to secure it at all. I can just hold it right here. And this is how I ended up screwing up that last bit actually. Uh, but then I have my hair dryer right here. I can dry the first coat and then I can come back around and um, do another one. So I'm just gonna go right kind of along the middle edge here. You'll get a little overspray, which is just, you know, gonna blend nicely with the yellow. So I'm just hitting the middle basically. And then I'm gonna give it a quick dry. And I don't wanna move this at all if I can avoid it. But it kinda, it, sometimes it moves on its own. So I don't know how, but it does. Like this one does not look like it's lined up anymore. So I'm gonna have to pull it up just a tad and replace it. And this does not have a very distinctive scale pattern either. So, um, you know, it's not gonna make a big difference either way. It's not, um, it's just a really like subtle scale pattern. So it won't matter too much. Um, just a little bit of texture, mainly it's just an orange, uh, faded into a pearl yellow and, um, and a copper. And I'm probably only going to take you guys through, um, 
I mean, I can post the whole video, I suppose. I suppose I can post the whole thing. But, um, I don't know what y'all want to talk about, so. Usually I have questions when I'm on live, so it's a little different, but, um. I do sell beets all over, um, the United States. I haven't looked too much yet into, um, shipping to Canada. That's something that I, if you're interested in ordering from us and you're in Canada, um, please PM us. And, um, and I'm going to look into what's, what, what it would take to get, um, to get shipments to China or China, I mean Canada. So you can see a little bit of a scale pattern there. And that's a really pretty pearl. It's hard to see. It's really hard to see in the light here. It's much, much more impressive in person. And I take all of my photos now in a, um, in like a black box. And, um, so you get a really good view of some of the, um, color textures. And it also shows through a lot better after it's cleared. You can really see the, um, you can really see the pearl, the pearl quality of it, but nothing is going to compare to when you actually get it in your hand. That's when you're going to know um, really how pretty they are and how much prettier they are hand painted than they are in the store and how much more eye catching. And then I double coat all my lures as well with epoxy. So you don't just get one coat that's going to scratch off when you hit a tree or rock. Um, I do, I do put two coats on and so it's nice and thick and, um, should be pretty durable. I've had plenty of people say it's, you know, it's a far superior quality to a store-bought bait. And um, we try to stay reasonably priced as well. Um, our baits, most most of my baits are um, anywhere in the six to twelve or six to fifteen dollar range. So, um, my Whopper Ploppers are 15, my Crankbaits and Jerkbaits are, um, the, the normal sizes are 12, and then, um, anything that I do that's really small, like maybe Minnow Shad or, um, something similar to that might be closer to 8 to 6. Um, I don't do a lot of stuff like that though, but I'm always open to suggestions, so if, if there's anything that you, uh, would like to see done that you think would be something that other people might be looking for too, because I'm not, I don't want to paint something that, you know, I'm not going to paint some crazy, um, thing that's going to take me hours and then I'm only going to sell one. Um, so, you know, something that you think other people might be interested in. And a lot of times I'll just go with it. I'll make a batch and, um, I mean, I'll sell them. I'm not worried about that. So, um, if it's something I think I can do fairly reasonably um, easily and and still make money off of um, and sell to other people as well, then I will do it. Or if you want to order several, if you want to order several, we can talk about totally fully custom orders. Um, we're also doing soft plastics now too, so you'll see in our store we have um, we have we will have here in the next day or two, um, a selection of soft plastic baits. We're doing, um, what we're calling quick craws, um, quick craws in two different sizes. And then we also have Ned rigs. And I have a blockage. I have a blockage. Okay, that's not good. So what do I do when I have a blockage? What do I do, everybody? Well, I either switch guns or I clean my gun. So, um, this time around, I think I'm going to clean my gun. Um, so, I'll run some water through it or some alcohol and see if I can blow through whatever's stuck. When you're doing detail work like this on a lot of baits and you're using pearls and you're not diluting, you're kind of asking for trouble. 
So sometimes you just have to um, flush them out really well. Sometimes it doesn't work and you have to just break the whole thing down. It just depends how clogged it is. Um, I'm thinking there's paint right in here though. So it might not be good. We'll see. Again, we always super appreciate likes and shares to our page. Um, really, that's what gets us. That's what gets us our business is word of mouth. Um, and we really appreciate you guys watching too. So, um, once I get through this, um, I'll probably show you guys like one round of doing the taps on these well now i probably won't get that far so um i'm probably going to sign off here but thank you all for um tuning in again check us out on youtube colorado custom lures on youtube and then also um like and share the page and then catch us live on friday nights as well where um, i do my live show from 8 to 10 that's uh, mountain standard time so However, that compares to where you're at. And uh, I think we're also going to probably be doing a session of soft plastics um, here sometime in the next few weeks um, live pouring soft plastics. So check us out then. Thanks all for watching the video and have a great night.